Hello again, Fizzles family and friends. This is the daily pastoral message for Friday, September 18. Today I'm recording from my backyard outside. It's a bit windy, but still a nice day to be outside. I am going to share with you today the lectionary gospel passage because I won't be preaching on the gospel this Sunday, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, before going to that, to catch up on some some news, it was a blessing this morning. I joined with Don and with Doug for our first coffee and a prayer session of the fall season, and we were able to share blessings and prayers with 10 people this morning between 7 and 8, and some coffee with most of those. Some people took just a prayer, but they were very appreciative that we were there, and it was a particular blessing since we weren't able to have coffee and a prayer this past spring due to the COVID pandemic. And so we will continue coffee and a prayer each Friday morning uh, through the rest of September and through October. And so anybody who is wanting to help spread God's love and blessings, please call Connie and sign up or call Linda and sign up to help be a prairista. Other less joyous news is if you saw my emails yesterday, you know that Hank passed away yesterday. He passed away peacefully. And we ask that you hold his sons, Tim and John, in your prayers. Arrangements have yet to be determined and we'll keep you informed. Also, as you know from yesterday's video or from, and if you've seen or read my emails, you know that I've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. But there is some good news. Yesterday I had a visit with my urologist who confirmed the diagnosis that had been shared with me earlier in the week by my primary care physician. But what the urologist stressed is reason for hope in that he said that even though there is cancer in the biopsy, the amount of cancer cells in the biopsy was very small, which improves of the prognosis and will influence treatment. But yes, it is still cancer. Yes, I will still need treatment of one type or another, whether it's radiation or surgery. And so I still humbly ask for your prayers and turn to God for sustaining me and sustaining us and my family through this time. Along those lines, the reason that I'm not going to be preaching the gospel passage on Sunday is that on Sunday this week for worship this week, I'll be having a more informal reflection on the 23rd Psalm in light of my diagnosis and in light of others who find the need to turn to God in times of trouble and stress. And after I've had a chance to reflect on the Psalm and, and what I anticipate my journey may be like, I'm asking you, any who are willing to share a brief story particularly if you have had cancer or of a loved one who has had cancer and share a testimony or reflection on how God helps see you through those times. The reflections can be brief for privacy's sake and for technical difficulties. Uh, with the mic picking up the testimony, I'll be turning off the camera during those testimonies. But I invite any who want to share a brief testimony of how God saw you through your troubled times, cancer or another trial in your life that I think will enrich the experience for the congregation and I know will help give me strength in this journey that I will be starting on with help of God, help of my family, and with help from you, my church family. And so let us turn to today's reading, the lectionary passage from the Gospel. We're continuing in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. It's the parable of the workers in the vineyard. And here we find these words. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples as they're on the road to Jerusalem. They've started on the road to Jerusalem and the cross. And Jesus is speaking as one teaching those who have been closest to him providing a message of God's grace. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner 
who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went and the landowner went out again about noon and about three o'clock and he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those who were hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the landowner replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is a parable of God's grace. God's grace that can't be quantified. God's grace that is beyond measure. It's a somewhat difficult parable parable to, to hear, and I'm sure it was difficult for the disciples to, to hear it, because in our usual way of thinking about fairness, we would think that the people who labored longer should have received more. But here, these people that were late coming to work, late coming to the party, as we sometimes say, received the same blessing as those who had been laboring all day. And so the difficulty is saying, well, why should we be good? Why should we follow the Lord? Why should we labor if what we get isn't any different than those who come later, who may have been vile sinners for their whole lives, but then turn to the Lord at the last. But this is a parable of blessing that even though we have our sins and our transgressions, they aren't counted and numbered against us. We don't have to be the most righteous people on the block. We just need to come to the Lord and ask for God's grace. And God's grace will be sufficient unto us. It's a wonderful paragraph when you think about it, that God's grace is so great that it is beyond measure. And so those who receive it, that have followed the paths of righteousness their whole life long, and those who heard the gospel message and followed Christ later in life, even after lives filled with sin, both received the blessing of God. And we can take comfort that God doesn't number all of our sins against us either, for God's grace is truly amazing. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for your truly amazing grace your grace that is beyond measure, your grace that is extended to us freely, even though we are sinners. But we are sinners saved by your grace. And we bless you for it, and we praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you that you are walking with us through life's journeys, and that you call us to follow you. And for those who have heard your message, following on your path is its own reward. And so let us always walk the path of love that you have laid before us. Lord, we ask you to be with Tim and with John in their hour of grief and with each of us as we grieve the loss of Hank and we celebrate his life and the knowledge that he is at peace and at rest with, with you. 
We continue to pray for all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic in whatever ways they are affected, whether it's by the disease itself or the effects of the disease in our daily lives. We ask you, Lord, to send your healing spirit to touch us in whatever way we need to be touched, helped, and healed. Lord, just be with our entire congregation that we may be recipients of your amazing grace and may show your grace to one another as a way to praise you and worship you. For you are truly a graceful, gracious, and giving God. And we bless your holy name. In that holy name of Jesus, our risen and living Savior, we pray. Amen. Look forward to sharing a video message with you tomorrow as we continue our new Saturday series through the Psalms and then to joining together with worship on Sunday. The weather forecast is to be dry, but it will be somewhat chilly. The predicted temperature at worship time is going to be around 57, and so dress accordingly. But if the weather is as predicted, we will be outside. And again, I invite you to think about a way that you would like to share testimony on how God has helped see you through troubled times. And I know that that will be uplifting to the congregation, and I really know that it will be uplifting to me as we begin to walk this cancer journey together. Until we talk again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong. And I know that God and grace is continuing to bless us all. Goodbye for now.